So may I begin this homily asking everyone here, if, if you come from or a part of or a part of a perfect family with little or no problems, issues, or complaints about yourself or any other member of your nuclear family, would you kindly please stand? I'm only standing because I can't sit. Welcome to the club, the global community of real life, family life, that we celebrate in this Mass today. We're in, we're in the sword, and we hear in that Gospel that Deacon Ron just read, the sword, the difficulties, the challenges, pierces our lives, and yet, as Simeon says, but life continues, nevertheless, in the midst of the struggles as well as the joys. You know, when you think about it, there's very little or no assurance that everything will go perfectly in anyone's life or family or vocation or otherwise. Anyway, how was your Christmas? My family had a very nice Christmas. We gathered last Monday at my youngest brother's house. But the conversation came up as my family members were talking Lamenting, joking about various family situations, concluding again, as my one sister-in-law has said on more than one Christmas, we have a dysfunctional family. And if you don't believe me, you could ask Vlad, a great parish musician, who was there to lend some stability to our imperfect and sometimes dysfunctional family. I love all my nine siblings, but there are some who, there's one who I don't like all that much. I don't like his values, I don't like his language, I don't like his way of doing things. I would say more except that this mass is being uh, videotaped for, um, for uh, YouTube. So anyway, we all have various family members. So welcome to the club, the family of humanity created by God in God's image, because God gives us the freedom to be ourselves, but always calls us, invites us individually, collectively as family members to keep improving and to make the best out of our lives, our families, no matter what was in the past. And in the past is important, because speaking of the past, the very first Gospel reading for the Christmas season, which would have been read last Sunday night, a week ago tonight at Christmas Eve Mass. And it's read only at that particular Mass, the first Mass, right, usually here at 4 o'clock, uh, to accommodate families with kids. It's the story of the history of Jesus' genealogy. So if you were here, Bishop Anjay, however, skipped that long complicated, boring genealogy, and did the short form as I did over in the, in the hall, and most smart priests do with all kids present. It's a very long and boring reading, tracing Jesus' family tree all the way back to Abraham, and ending up with Joseph, Mary's husband. So St. Matthew's Gospel is very concerned about addressing, uh, ad addressing a Jewish audience and making the link between Jesus and the Old Testament. So if you heard that full reading, um, and it wouldn't be appropriate for uh, kids you know, squirming, hearing all those hardly pronounceable names, you'd probably be asking yourself, why did that guy choose the long gospel? Well, the answer is to show that Jesus' family wasn't perfect. And it's true. Obviously, we celebrate the Holy Family today, but other than Jesus and Mary, the rest of the family weren't perfect, and yet they were family. And so in the middle of that long list are some surprising names of people who are not the best in the world. And so we hear in both the first reading and the second reading today about this exalted figure of Abraham, who the father of the three mono the theistic religions, Abraham. But Abraham begins with 
unfairly banishing Ishmael, his own son, and Ishmael's mother, Hagar, into the desert. Not very nice. Jacob steals his brother Esau's birthright by deceiving his father. Not good. And David, worst of all, commits adultery with a woman named Bathsheba and then arranges to have Bathsheba's husband Uriah, as a warrior, put on the front line to get killed. Not a nice picture. Jesus' family tree also includes Tamar, a Canaanite woman, someone outside the Jewish faith who seduces her father-in-law, uh, Judah, to have a child, and Rahab, another Canaanite, another outsider, was a prostitute. So when you put it all together, it's a good thing you don't hear, we, don't, you know, we only get one day of the year to hear that, and yet that is the situation of our history as a human race, and that uh, that is you know, often uh, shades of it in family life. So how did we get to Jesus in the midst of all of that? And that's what we come to celebrate. Our families, imperfect though they may be, are places where the holy can dwell. And that's what we come to celebrate. All of us have families, none of them perfect, uh, sometimes very challenging, different situations. And, and you know, even in the inner workings of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, there would have been aunts and uncles and cousins who weren't perfect. So even they knew right from the very beginning that living life is not a perfect situation. So this Christmas and every Christmas, we get to take on this Sunday after Christmas a deep breath to remind ourselves how holiness makes its home in humanity. How holiest holiness makes his home in each of us, just as Jesus did at Christmas in the, in, in the person of Jesus. So our readings today underscore the need for patience in our lives. In the first reading from Genesis, we hear about this ancient married couple, Abraham and Sarah, who very much need to employ the virtue of patience, not only in waiting for a child, but in living with the challenges of day-to-day -day living. And as the second reading from Hebrews tells us, Abraham went out not knowing where he was going, but he put his trust, he put his trust that somehow God would provide. That's the way it was then, that's the way it is now, that's the way it always is in human life. So we don't have this pre-recorded video of what will transpire in life that we can fast forward and check it out and see if we can make some changes afterwards. We have to try to live day by day. But the key is, in the Gospel story, in the midst of it all, where do we find the Holy Family? Where do we find Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? And it's the same setting we're in right now, in the temple. Mary and Joseph were stepping way out of the normal scheme of things, trusting in the message of Gabriel to embrace this unique family plan, this holy blueprint put out by God. So how do they do it? Same way we all try to do it, step by step, day by day, to the, with the ongoing guidance of the Holy Spirit through prayer. And so we also meet in this gospel uh, two wise and extremely patient folks, Simeon and Anna. Anna, 84, Simeon, probably older than that. Simeon was a man who spent his life uh, waiting, waiting for God's atypical activity. And Anna, a prophetess who practiced spotting and identifying divine interventions and mockings whenever she saw it, on the watch for God's intervention. Both of them, like, like many grandparents here today, uh, blessed, they were blessed with this announcement of a re revelation of you know, somebody new, a newborn in the family. Simeon and Anna told Mary and Joseph that family life wouldn't be easy. Simeon and Anna both said that. You're, you're going to be pierced by a sword. They were undertaking together the hardest the most awesome, the most important vocation of all, parenthood. And I often say at a baptism, you know, that the hardest job in the world is not president or pope, but number one, mother, number two, being a dad. Simeon was clear that this great news, though, 
contained with it its own share of struggles and pain for Mary and Joseph, and to one degree or another for all of us in different ways as family members. So we don't always function the way we should, uh, the way that we would like to, uh, but we are, you know, we welcome ourselves into this club of humanity from God's family to your family, to my family, to our family together. But someone once said to me, and I often think about it, the only worse thing than having a family is not having one at all. And there are many who don't. So Pope Francis recently said, there is no ideal family, but there is always the ideal of the family that we celebrate in this Mass today. So family comes in all shapes and sizes, however your family is configured, know that God wants to make a home in your life, in your home, in our, in our parish, all different places. God comes to make a home among us and dwells among us. And so I think the invitation for us is to make that place for the Lord in our family life, in prayer, in coming to church, and acknowledging all of the ways, in good times and bad, in sickness and in health, that God brings us together. And the most important thing, I think, is to pray together, as we are doing here. The family that prays together usually has a much, much greater chance of staying together through the ups and downs. So today, hopefully, despite all the warts, imperfections, impatience, uh, we can say to each other, happy feast day, because like Mary and Joseph, God is with us and our families. So let us try to make 2024, which begins in just a few hours, yet another opportunity to grow, and as the gospel concludes, to become strong, filled with wisdom, because the favor of the Lord is upon us.